Hello, it's Jackie from Kinvera Pottery and I'm delighted you could be here with me today in the west of Ireland. I'm going to show you how to make a vase from ear dry clay. Your vase can hold some dried flowers, pens and pencils, paintbrushes, or if you place a jar of water inside it, it can hold fresh flowers. So some of the items you will need today for our workshop is this air dry clay which can be got in art shops or school supply stores and is readily available online, a craft knife or paring knife from the kitchen drawer, paintbrush, bowl of water, a cotton tea towel, some newspaper, a wooden rolling pin, some foliage like these leaves might be nice and some textured fabric like this crochet and lace. So when you open your pack of clay for the first time you just need to cut or tear off a good wedge of this white sticky clay for yourself and um, this will keep for months so just make sure that you wrap it up really well and place it in a baggie or in an airtight container and this can be used again and again. Flatten out your cotton tea towel on a hard flat surface and taking your wedge of clay, you place it in one hand and using the heel of your other hand, just make it into a flattened kind of pancake shape. You don't need to take too long to do this but you're just waking up the clay. Then placing it on your cotton tea towel and roll your clay. You can see that it's spreading nicely into a pancake shape. Lift it and turn it as you roll. Um, this ensures that you get a nice big slab of clay. So as you can see, the clay is spreading nicely and evenly and flattening out so that we can create our vase. So just a tip, if your clay is quite sticky and sticking to the tea towel and to your wooden rolling pin, I sometimes use corn flour, just household corn flour, to put onto my rolling pin and onto the slab of clay. This ensures that it won't stick. So there we go, that's a nice flat piece of clay. Um, it's not too thick. So now I'm going to use a paper template so that I can make a cylindrical vase quite easily from this template. Um, what I find really handy are the TV radio pages from a newspaper. They're already lined and measured so that you can get a nice rectangular shape for your template. By placing our template on our slab of clay, it gives us an idea of how our vase is going to be. So I'm just going to move it around. I think this is the best place. And place it onto your slab of clay and using a ruler or just something with a, with a straight edge, I'm going to start cutting around my template to give me this rectangle of clay. Remove the little bits around the edge, we're going to need those later and when you remove your template you'll have a nice rectangle of clay, not too thin. And what we're going to do now is thin out either end and that's so that one piece can fit inside the other and give us a good join for our vase. So I'm placing my rolling pin on the tea towel on the table and rolling up 
half an inch or so onto the slab of clay. Just rocking up and down a few times, not placing too much pressure. And you can see that this edge is being thinned out and I'm going to do it over the other side as well. So my rolling pin is parallel to the edge of my slab of clay and just a few times rocking up and down onto my slab which is gently thinning out this side seam. So now we're going to make the cylindrical part of our vase and how we do that is we need to attach one side up that we've thinned already inside the other thin bit of the slab of clay. And what we need to do for that is we need to scratch up the surface of one side and add our water. So I'll show you how to do that now. So using my knife I'm just going to cross hatch into the clay on the thinned bit that I've just made. Just being careful that I'm not going to go through the clay, just on the surface, a little bit of cross hatching. To that, I'm going to add some water. And what this is doing is it's, it's, it's making the clay gloopy or sticky. And we need this stickiness for it to attach to the other bit of clay. And I'm just going to go over that again, another little bit of cross hatching. So I'm just using my knife to gently rough up the surface of the clay. It doesn't look very nice, but it serves a great purpose in keeping our clay gloopy and sticky so that we can stick it to the other side of the clay. So now we've done most of the technicalities for our vase, we can have some fun with the foliage and the lace. Um, on our blank canvas here so this is this will be the outer bit of your vase so if I just put some leaves on the slab and maybe a little bit of lace there just a couple of things to remember that um, leaves and foliage with the textured side facing down onto the clay work better and fabric that has some kind of thickness on it placed onto your slab of clay. Taking my wooden rolling pin I'm going to roll gently over the pieces that I have just put down. Just be careful with this so that your pieces don't fold over themselves. Now you can see They've left really nice patterns on the clay. If you don't want to use your rolling pin, you can place your little bit of textured leaf down there or your lace and just ever so gently dab around to get a nice piece of texture. So now for a really fiddly part of the process, but it's worth it. We're going to make our cylinder part of our vase and using our wooden rolling pin, I'm going to lift up my slab of clay. So if you just lift it up and put your rolling pin in underneath. And like the handlebars of a motorbike, I'm just going to turn it around like this so that this um, cross hatched bit is facing away from me. You're going to need your two hands to do this now, so while you're holding on to the rolling pin with your little bit of clay hanging over it, again using your knife, you're going to cross hatch the inside of your vase. So we're just going to rough up the surface just ever so slightly. Again, just a little bit of water and maybe another little bit of cross hatching, making it really gloopy and sticky so that we, one piece can stick to the other. Leaning over it with my rolling pin, I'm just going to tuck in the side here and the rolling pin is going to help me to seal it. So line it up ever so carefully and gently. You can't spend enough time on this. And as the two meet each other, I'm just going to roll the rolling pin over it back and over a couple of times 
just pushing down ever so slightly as I'm doing this because that's going to make sure that one side sticks to the other. So again, using the handlebars, I'm going to lift it up and there you have your cylinder. So I'm just checking the seam as I roll my rolling pin around. It's helping me check every bit of my vase. Yep, that seam is really well stuck. So I'm just going to tilt it and slide off my vase and let it stand up. So that's the standing part of our vase. We just need to put on a, a base on it now. So now we're going to make the base of our vase. And this is a leftover bit of clay from the original slab. If you don't have enough, you can just roll out a fresh bit of clay. And taking my vase, I'm going to turn it upside down so it's sitting on its rim just for a few moments while I do teeny cross hatches or little sharp cuts into this little bit of base and again like attaching one side to the other it's just to make a key so that it sticks to our base. A little bit of water to make it gloopy and another little bit of cross hatching. So if I was going to pick this up, I would probably have my hands like this, but if you flip them over and hold it ever so gently and place it onto this new piece of clay, pressing down gently, and I'm going to use this motion with my hands just to jiggle it around on this clay so that it, it eventually will stick. Then if I place my hand gently on the top, I can use my knife to cut around the cylinder. So I've got a nice clean base attached. Peeling away this bit. You may find that it's not stuck precisely. Um, so you can just use a paintbrush to just pull up small bits of clay from the base onto the main body of the vase. So that's your vase made. A little bit fiddly, but worth it. And um, just a little bit of finishing off here. I have a wrung out sponge. It's, it's kind of damp and I can just finish off the rim just by going around a few times. Also, the base can look a little bit raggy, so you can use a sponge to soften out those bits where you used your brush to pull up one piece of clay over the other. So it's still wobbly. Um, it's going to take two or three days to dry out. It needs to be left on a flat surface but air can move around it. Or you can kind of force dry it a little bit. You can put it into your oven at 100 degrees for maybe half an hour. Um, just remember that when you take it out of the oven to air your oven, leave the oven door open for a while. Um, so this stuff is non-toxic but it can get a little bit fumy. So you can force dry it in your domestic oven, 100 degrees, um, and then once it's dry you will go from this wobbly state to this hardened state, air dry clay. And I'm going to show you now how you can paint this. So I just use poster paint or chalk pastels or sometimes food colouring, anything, any kind of pigment you have at home really pouring a little bit of paint here out onto a little dish and I will apply this now onto my finished piece. So when your piece is dry after a few days or else um, let it cool when it comes out of the oven, again you might want to soften some of the edges and I use an emery board for that so just make sure that you wear a mask and you're in a wind ventilated area and you can just gently soften those edges on the seam, on the rim and where you attached your base. So um, when it's hard I think it's really pretty. I think it looks just like porcelain as it is. But if you want to add colour I'm going to add some of the green I've just poured out into the dish and let's just say I wanted some green on this 
leaf um, you can leave it like that you can leave thick paint but again if I just get my wrung out sponge once it's on there a couple of minutes the clay is soaking it in nicely into the textured bit and then when I remove some of the paint you can see it just leaves a very very delicate colour onto your textured bit. Another pigment I like to use is chalk pastel and again I'm just going to colour in roughly a little piece of texture here and maybe rub it in with my finger and you can see how well the powder from the chalk pastel is just going into the grooves of the leaf and I'll reach over and get my wrung out sponge once again and you can see as I just wipe off the top layer of pigment it leaves a lovely delicate colour onto the leaf. So all of the techniques we used here today can be used in traditional ceramics. I use them myself but I have a kiln where I can fire my traditional clay. The air dry clay is not waterproof so just to remember that. So you can place your dried flowers in there. That would make a really nice gift or to keep for yourself. Um, also when you're putting your texture on, I just used lace and crochet and some leaves today. Um, when I made this one I used an earring and I made a really nice indentation. So just have a look around your house and use your imagination and see what happens when you place something textured onto your clay. You could get some really interesting results there. So this one again made from air dry clay. I painted it all over and rubbed off um, the, the paint. I did want to put some fresh blooms in this one so I found a little jar that I could put some water in. So that keeps the water away from the main body of the vase. So I just want to thank you for joining me today. I am passionate about creativity and I'd love to see the items that you make. I'm on convaripottery.com or Jack Ceramics, that's J-A-Q, on Instagram. So I'm delighted that you were here today. And again, thank you. And I'm waiting for the next time that we can get creative together. Thank you.